Good morning, everybody. Come on in. Um, I want to welcome you to the Alternatives Expo. And uh, this morning I'm going to tell you uh, what we are, why we do it, and uh, what some of the potential is um, for activism using the alternatives approach. And uh, and then I've got actually something that to throw out to you at the end that I think might be a really great idea um, for the freedom movement. And uh, so, first of all, the Alternatives Expo, or the Alt Expo, we came about because um, in one of the earlier um, Free State Project events, um, some of us wanted to hear about um, alternative approaches, alternative uh, money systems, alternative um, lifestyles, everything that what we recognize is the mainstream systems are all corrupted, you know, the mainstream money system, the educational system, the medical system. So the the reform approach is we go in and we, you know, plead with our legislators to, to change it. And um, we, we, you know, we wait for other people to change things. But in the, the alternatives movement, the idea is it's a, it's a really empowering message is that we can do something different. And I've always said that the, um, uh, the homeschoolers were kind of my heroes because they really know that they want the school system to be better for their kids, but they realize that if they go to the school board and they just try year after year, they might just get some small incremental change. And but their children will still suffer under the, the, the poor system. So they, they say we can do it and we have to do it. So we're going to do, we're going to take an alternative approach now. We're going to homeschool our kids. That's the only alternative we know to, what to do and uh, that we can do and we have the control over. So, so we're going to do it. So now think about that as the empowering message. A lot of things where, uh, I like to say I spent my first 25 years in the libertarian movement complaining about things and, and complaining about the news on TV and things like that. But the homeschoolers are t taking this... Um, they've gotten the message from somewhere that I can change things. So that's a, that's a whole different message. I am empowered. I'm not weak. I'm not a victim. I am a creator. I'm going to create a better education for my kids. So anyway, I always give them credit for being, being heroes. Um, but the other other kind of movements, um, you know, the electrical utility system is corrupted. It's, it's essentially... Um, the monopoly capitalists, to use a term, back in the 1920s or around that time frame, they got uh, used their power of money and influence to get um, uh, monopolies, and they they would own the power companies and they could control the rates and they could get richer because everybody else was excluded. Um, so the alternative energy people said, "Hey, we can get you know energy from the sun and from the wind." And even though those things aren't viable yet, they're still teaching the same kind of message, and that is, we have our own power, and in their case, it's electrical power, but we have our own ability. You know, we're smart people. We can build the society that we want. So that's why the subtopic today is building the future. So we have to, um, you'll still hear within the, the freedom movement, a lot of people that they're complaining about how bad the p police abuse is. Well, let's talk about what we're going to do about police abuse. Or they're complaining about how wasteful spending is, or how uh, you name it. You know how bad the money system is. So, so the the people that do get involved in creating their own alternative money systems, those are heroes too. And some people, uh, including in this audience, you know, have suffered from from what they've done. Uh, to try to promote a, a good, stable money system, but they, but they're doing the thing that that comes from exercising your own power, from realizing you can change things. And it's one of the things I want to talk about in the alternatives uh, movement is some of the churches actually teach you that you're um, not powerful. You know, God is powerful. That uh, the bishop, the pope, the you know the church structure has all the power, and you don't make the decisions. So some of the um, the religious groups that over the years have essentially kind of rebelled and said, no, we essentially I like the Quakers because they finally said, no, we can have direct communion with God, and we'll get our messages from Him. No, thank you from the pope, the bishops, the whole hierarchy. So even in the 
in our alternatives movement, we have alternative spirituality groups. And there's one that meets in Nashua and has for about 8 or 10 years. Um, and we'll talk about them. In fact, there'll be a meeting uh, 10 o'clock Sunday morning you know, of an alternative spirituality group. But one of the big important messages, and again, I like the Quakers for this. Um, I met some Quakers who didn't like the... Um, the uh, the sanctions against Iraq and they were keeping the children from having medical supplies and all that. Well, what the Quakers did was they said, well, we're going to gather up some supplies and we're going to go there. And so they would adopt a few families and they would take some of the prosperity of themselves and their community and they'd actually go to Iraq and they'd help a few families. They'd, they'd help the ones that they could. So one of the other messages I like is uh, people feel helpless and they don't know what to do. And, and I just wish I remember who said, who gave this message, but it was that do all that you can in the place that you are with the tools that you have in the time that you have. So you can't really do more than that. We'll get into details about, well, you make your own choice about what kind of activism you want to do. But, but don't go around feeling helpless. You are powerful human beings. You have intelligence. You have abilities. And you can exercise them, and you can improve the world for yourself and for for the whole movement, for the whole movement of humanity. Um, so the Alternatives Expo, what we're trying to do is, again, spread that empowerment message and um, have people tell what they're doing in their area. Um, I wish the farming guy would be here. I think he's had a car problem, but we're, we have somebody else that may uh, fill that time slot. But... Um, the um, the one of the other things I thought about these various different alternatives movements. You've got the alternative health care and the alternative money and the alternative energy people. I thought that it would be a good idea to get them all together at one conference because maybe the chiropractors over here don't know about uh, silver money. So at the same conference, they'd meet each other. And they've already made a big decision in life, and that is that they're not going to go along with the mainstream anymore. Maybe it's just in their little niche area. But once they all get together, they're going to meet the other guys who've already made that conscious decision to do something different. Now this is different. Um, this is like different than the intellectual approach whereas we're going to have philosophers and we're going to come up with the perfect idea at the top and then we're going to try to teach everybody the perfect idea. No, this is a bunch of people with imperfect, you know, intellectual philo philosophical structure, but they're but they're taking action in their area to be freer. And um, so at this same kind of alternatives expo where we gather all the different alternative approaches together would be the alternative ideas, which is, of course, our, our ideas of freedom because everybody else is teaching, you know, essentially social democratic theory that, oh, we'll go to our legislators and get them to change things and take the money from everybody and redistribute it to the people who need it more. Well, our idea is, is now the alternative idea, even though it was the original American idea. Um, I think... Um, it may be time for the Alternatives Expo idea to look at going outside the freedom movement community and going into the towns. Uh, I've already had a couple of people in a couple of towns in New Hampshire. Like when you have a small town here, they, they've got a town hall and it's got a meeting place. And essentially anybody in town can use it, you know, if they want to have... Uh, a little uh, potluck supper, you know, they just go to the town clerk and they get the key and they can use the hall for something. So in a couple of towns they've said, well, let's have an alternatives expo in our town hall. And I'm going, wow. I always think of them as like them, you know, we're us and they're them. But, but in some towns there's more of us and they're saying, yes, come in, you know, teach us all the alternatives. So... I think it would be an excellent way to introduce the alternative ideas, the money systems, all these things to, to people in all the little towns all over New Hampshire. And um, it could be done in all, all over the country. Of course, we're focusing on New Hampshire, and we're, ho we're hoping you'll all move here and help us out with these ideas. Um, now I'm going to um, open it up for some of your ideas in a little bit, but what I wanted to uh, get into was a, a new idea that's been bouncing around is, um, you know, we, we have problems with our towns and cities, with the police departments, with the zoning departments, with all the bureaucracy and all that. And the thing is, when you go to the town hall to try to deal with these things, you, you have more red tape and more paperwork. And some people, 
you know, don't know how to handle it, and they, they basically end up getting screwed because they didn't, you know, cross the T and dot the I and file things on time and all that. So I think that, you know, if we're so smart and we can figure out how the system works, you know, we should help the townspeople in some of these towns with with some of those things so that... Essentially, you know, libertarians need uh, some good PR. Some of the, some of the activity in the libertarian movement uh, of just protesting random things, and you know, they have to call out the town police and and the people in town. The, the PR is bad for the people in town because they pay the taxes to pay for the police, and so sometimes they actually have to spend more money to hire more police and to build more jail cells. You know, because there's more protests. And so it costs them more. So that's bad PR physics, I call it. It's, it. It costs them more. So how can we do things that actually benefit people more, but also teach them the freedom message at the same time? So are you ready for this? We have the Alt Expo. This idea is called the Alt City Hall. And what that would be is... Um, I actually was involved in a campaign in Nashua, not a campaign to get somebody elected, but to throw out somebody. We had a bad mayor. And what happened was nobody knew that there was a process, so we essentially studied it, and there was a recall process. We produced a booklet about how to recall a mayor. We held meetings about how to recall a mayor. And finally, when enough people were convinced that uh, this could be done, oh, yeah, it's right here, and we have the power. They had to be empowered first. Um, then we circulated the petitions and everything, and we threw out the mayor of the second largest city in New Hampshire. Now, that was just knowledge joined with the empowerment idea and then, you know, organization. You know, we, we had meetings, and we got it in the paper, and we got on the local talk shows and things like that. And people were actually, their eyes were opened. They just said, we can do this? Really? Because they, they again have that us versus them thing and they think that them, they're so powerful and everything. Well, we have the power and we're just not using it. And nobody's telling us that we have the power. They're saying, oh no, we have the power, come sign this form, blah, blah, blah. So the idea of the Alt City Hall is... Um, we that 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 you know we can we can recognize what's wrong out there. They can recognize what's wrong, but they don't know they have the power. We can um, we, we can get the knowledge. You know, a lot of this stuff it's all it's all written in the city ordinances, the city charters, the things like that, the state uh, laws. Um, there's things like the open meeting law that says you can look at all the public records and all that. But a lot of people don't know about those things. And all we have to do is become a little more knowledgeable, help other people. And this is like um, how to build a, a populist movement for freedom, you know, a, a movement from the ground up. Well, everybody's got problems with City Hall. Our, our idea would be, uh, and I actually, I can't take full credit for this idea. I actually heard it first from Bob Schultz. He says, we need to build an office across the street from City Hall, a little storefront, rent a little storefront, and maybe if people are in the city clerk's office and they're getting frustrated, we'll say, come across the street to the alternative City Hall. We'll help you out with this problem. And um, the thing is, all of these things take money, and this is another thing we want to kind of get out there is sustainable activism. How do we make this so that we can afford to do it? Now we, you know, for this tent and our event, we shamelessly, you know, beg for donations. And this year we started using chip-in and that worked pretty well. We got two-thirds of the money to pay for the tent uh, through chip-in. But it's because you guys out here realize that it costs money. I mean, usually... Uh, I, last year I had a chart and I said, here's what the tent cost. It cost $300. Here's where we are in our donations. Um, it doesn't take actually a lot of money to do these things. You know, we get by on a lot of five, ten, twenty dollar donations. Uh, an alternative city hall would have to do the same thing. And uh, I don't know if we could, you know, charge a, a fee. It wouldn't be legal advice, but it would be, you know, a little guidance. Um, what? Oh yeah, I just want to go back to the thing about recalling the mayor because we got all the knowledge and taught people that they could throw out the mayor. After after a while, they were saying, "We want you for the mayor." <laughs> and I says, "Wait a minute, I don't want to be a mayor. That's not my type of thing." But in the alternative city hall, you know, we could have uh, not a mayor, but you know, some kind of. Uh, 
we can have a paid staff, you know. We can have a budget, a paid staff, if people were, were willing to pitch in their five and ten bucks, you know, to make things make things happen that way. So I don't know if, if we'll go forward with this idea, but we're, I'm going to lay it out and propose it a few times. And So we went ahead and reserved a domain name, altcityhall.com. And uh, it's it's going along with the whole alternatives theme. There is an alternative to having the state the way it is now, and you know we have all kinds of uh, theoreticians about what it should be, but it's it's what we do every day, day in and day out, the small actions. And so we're actually going to have to build the future. We're going to have to develop it as we go along, you know. And if what 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 we try today doesn't work, we're going to have to change it and try something else tomorrow. But, you know, the main thing about this message is that we can do it. And, you know, by all rights, we, we should do it if we want to see a better future and not complain about it. Now, I'm not promising that things are going to be better overnight. Of course, they're not. It took a long time to get where we are. Um, the Alt City Hall could be the place where uh, somebody has an alternative uh, silver money system. They can hang out in the Alt City Hall, and the people that come by that come for help uh, with their uh, their zoning issue in town well they might get buttonholed by the silver money guy and he might start talking to him he might show him a video in the back room about why you should be using silver money like in, in our in our movement we all know all this we see all these videos and everything but you know joe average in any town usa he doesn't know this yet so we're always talking about how we've got to educate the people well this could be the the place because you you need a a place to have people sit down and watch a video, and um, if, if uh, let's say if there is a problem with police abuse in a certain town, we could be the place where people come to register their complaint, and we could be the people that say, well, here we've got a fill in the blank uh, lawsuit that you can file if you want because you know it's not really that hard and you can get fill in the blank uh, legal forms things like that. You know, the phenomenon that I saw when they wanted me to be the mayor was they were going, My, thank God there's some hope, you know. This guy uh, could be the one. And I didn't want to be the one, but all I did was read the law and I said, okay, what we got to do is circulate petitions and we get X number of petitions, you know, that forces uh, a new mayoral election, blah, blah, blah. So I think one of, that's one of the things people need out there is a little hope. Like, you know, we've got a bad economy, we've got an oppressive government, uh, kind of at every level. Um, you know, a lot of times uh, the police these days, they're, they're giving tickets for the least little thing. And, uh, you know, the economy's bad enough and all of a sudden you get a ticket for $120 or $300 or whatever. And you just... Um, somebody the other day told me a story where his mechanic was fixing his car and... Um, the mechanic drove it to go somewhere and it wasn't uh, uh, the registration wasn't up to date because I think the car was in the shop for two weeks and so they impounded the car and um, the guy already had I think six hundred dollar mechanic bill and I think he had an equal bill for the towing the storage of the car to get the license renewed and to pay some administrative fee that's just oppressive here this I, I know the guy he's like a carpenter he's struggling to make it he's got a new baby and it's it's just so wrong it just got me all upset and uh, he should have a place to go complain about this he should have somebody that would help him sue or whatever and while he's in the office there somebody will talk to him about silver money you know so that's the alt city hall concept um, now what's interesting is we could actually sort of like we do alt expo within the the greater pork fest event in a lot of these like i said these town halls they say well sure you can come in and use the town hall the alt city hall could actually be inside the existing town hall because there have been a couple of lawsuits about um, <clears throat> about the use of town halls and city halls. So in Nashua, again, because I had a lot of experience there, they tried to keep some people from using the city hall auditorium. There was some Wiccans that wanted to have their celebration there. There was a taxpayer group. And there was the Ross Perot supporters. And there was some people on the, in the Board of Aldermen that said, oh, we shouldn't let those people use City Hall. And so they denied them the right to use it. And there was a group there called the First Amendment Legal Defense Association. They rallied. I think they went ahead and just sued them in straight in federal court. 
because there's a provision in the uh, there's a civil rights provision in there about uh, if a state authority denies you a civil right or whatever. So this case ended up going to a federal court. The federal court judge said to the alderman, "What were you guys thinking? These people live here. They paid for that. That's their building. They have a right to use it." So this would be the real wild concept. The alt city hall could be inside city hall. <laughs> Because they can't deny us the right to use that facility. There's all kinds of ideas like this. Because, you know, first of all, you know, what I was saying, an, an alt city hall would have expenses. Well, the city hall we've already paid for, you know, so maybe we don't have to pay rent. We just have the alt city hall could meet there on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. or something. And once we get enough people contributing to it, maybe we do get a storefront sometime. The Alt City Hall could actually be a virtual presence, an online alternative city hall. Um, but, you know, again, if we're going to end up building a free society, we, we're going to have to do it with our own bare hands. And we're going to have to communicate with the rest of the people, the Joe Averages of America. They're all frustrated about something. We need to learn an approach that finds the common things that we that we have that we have uh, common complaints um, for example um, just the, say the anti-war movement our common complaint is you know this is horrible they're murdering innocent people and they're doing it to, uh, you know just to grab the oil wealth and other resources of all these other countries we the the new libertarians we should be forming alliances with all the people that have that issue in common with us now of course a lot of people in the anti-war movement are social democrats and they want the government to have all kinds of programs and we can still ally with them on the common issues well the same thing goes with the the joe averages in the towns you know we don't really need to get into any more arguments with people about the, all the fine points of things let's work on building the future on on our common points um, I say this because, you know, I got involved in the whole libertarian movement uh, through objectivism and Ayn Rand, and uh, I didn't know it at the time, but I was learning a, a kind of an esoteric creed of how to argue over infinitesimally small fine points and argue to the point of creating enemies instead of making friends and building a movement. So there's... The new thinking is that we've got to be building the movement. We, we're not out there to argue with people and piss them off. It just apparently doesn't work, you know. Why would anybody think it would? I don't know. But uh, So um, I want to tell you about one other alt thing that we uh, started doing. Um, you know, if, if we're going to build alliances and meet with other people that we have something in common with, and stop arguing with them and stop just talking to other libertarians we've got to go out to these other organizations so I take just some of my interests I'm interested in uh, alternative energy I'm interested in uh, natural foods things like that um, we should um, identify the other groups around go to their meetings talk about the things we have in common and when when they suggest a state-based solution we need to be the ones that say, you know, there could be another way. I know you think that that might work, but um, w what if we, you know, you know, took our own power, did our own things? If what if we opposed uh, the state regulating this? You know, in other words, we sneak in our, or we try to influence, you know, with our libertarian thinking, our pro-freedom thinking. Uh, but we don't have to argue with them and convince them today. Or if we have a video, you know, a YouTube clip or something, let's, let's work on people in a, in a real friendly manner. So anyway, what we, what we started was this thing we call the Alternatives Organizations Tour. We're going to find all these other organizations that have something in common and go to their meetings. And what we did was uh, we started a website called altorgs.com. So we've got Alt Expo. So the Expo is a, a show, you know, like this. Um, the alt orgs tour is where we go around to the other groups and I only called it a tour because I'm willing to drive people there you know I'm uh, for people that are new to the state they don't know their way around yet I'll I've been here for a while I'll show them the place I know some of the people because I've been in a lot of these groups already so we're going outside the libertarian movement to other organizations and plus the tour does a couple of fun things we have a, a Boston pub tour we go to the, some historic pubs in Boston we uh, 
we learned a couple of things on the last tour. First of all, it was a whole lot of fun. And it was, it, apparently, libertarians like to drink beer, so uh, it, it served that need. <laughs> Perish the thought. Um, we found we went to the Green Dragon Tavern, which is apparently you know up in the attic or the basement or somewhere in there. The revolutionaries met and they plotted and schemed, you know, what they were going to do to harass the British or whatever. Well, it's just like this kind of disco club now, but uh, you can't get in the door. The line is all the way down the block, you know. So we put that on our tour and we just couldn't even get in. And I think it had like a fifteen dollar cover or something. Um, but we went to an Irish bar, so those Irish are always good for both beer and revolution, so that was good. Um, we've got another Boston Pub tour uh, coming up that's going to be a lot of fun. That's October 1st. Okay, good. But you can just go to altorgs.com. So what we're trying to do then is, is create the feel within our movement and then externally to that, to the people we know that... We don't have to do the same old, same old mainstream. We're going to build the future. We, we just adopted the word alternatives because people were already using it, and it was a nice feeling word. You know, alternative medicine, that's accepted. Alternative energy. So, for example, we don't call ourselves the Anarchist Liberation Front or something challenging like that, you know. Um, uh, I'm an agorist, but I didn't call it an agorist uh, thing because nobody knows what that word means. But alternatives, that's good. It's, it's a, a word people can swallow. I liked the things like Alt Expo because I, I don't know if anybody knows about the Usenet uh, thing. They used to have Alt this, Alt that, so I just sort of adopted that. And so one of the... The last thing is I wanted to um, also you know, you know, foster this community among ourselves and get uh, a lot of people to be involved in this too. So over time we've gotten more volunteers, we've gotten more contributors to be able to afford the tents and things like that. So I want to invite everybody to, um, you know, to be a speaker if you've got a topic you're good at. I want you to, you know, if you know um, some other even more qualified speaker to refer them to us. Um, we're gonna we're gonna try to have other events, and you know I, I would love for you to be involved in it. And uh, for example, we have exhibit tables. We try to make it real economical too. But you know, think about the future. We could have an alt expo at a county fair. Let's say they have like dozens of acres, you know, and you pay a certain amount to have your own tent. We could have an alt expo at a county fair where we're talking to all these people that come from all over the state to see the cows and things like that and who's got the best broccoli and cauliflower and all that. But we could also be talking to them about silver money and, you know, alternative energy and alternative ideas, agorism, things like that. It, it could be done. I think... Uh, I know the Libertarian Party, for example, would go to county fairs and they'd have a little booth and they'd administer the world's smallest political quiz and chat with people. So I don't think that's the approach that's going to make us free. So I think that we could, we could do our own Alt Expo. Uh, one last piece of the Alt Expo thing, too, is, is we have a website which is just not maintained at, that well right now, but it has the potential to be a place for all the, um, a catalog of information of the alternatives in New Hampshire. Like I'd like to, uh, uh, I'd like to have people that, that are experts in their field or want to be experts even. You can take a page on the Alt Expo website and you can be the author of that page. So there was somebody here yesterday that was composting was her thing. And I says, I'll give you the composting page on the Alt Expo. And, and what we would really want to have it be is a place where Let's say you move to New Hampshire as a new free stater and you want to know more about composting in New Hampshire. I'm just picking that as a topic. There's a search box. You'd search for composting. And there you'd find everybody in the state and has supplies or whatever. So we want to be the place to turn to for you know these alternative ideas, alternative events. We would list all these different organizations. The Alt Expo site, uh, the software that runs it, has a discussion forum capability so it could be the place where the discussion of these things goes on so for example there's already all these different libertarian discussion forums so one of them will tend to be more for civil disobedience crowd and one will be for the crowd crowd that likes to run campaigns and get people elected we'd like the altexpo.org site to be the one you go to to talk about the different alternatives approaches so that's kind of uh, 
in a nutshell a lot of the ideas, how we started, why we're here, and uh, what we'd like to do for the future. And I really want to make it clear that we want you to all be part of the Big Happy Alternatives family, you know, and contribute to it. And any any other ideas about how we can do this, these kind of things better, or how we can influence the public better? Boy, I'm ready to hear them. You had your hand up. Oh, I'm just curious if you thought about uh, having <coughs> alternative expos in uh, alter expos in other regions of the country. Like, I would like to have something like this go on in Kansas City, for example. I think it would be great if we could just have a, like a traveling tour like that, but but we don't want to, I guess, bring people from New Hampshire to come to Kansas City. We'd right. No, help. We want to market it to Kansas City people. Right. People in that region. I think it could be done. Um, they're, they're, the thing is, you know, all the people that are that are in the alternatives movements, they're already there. You just have to like find them all, call them all up, and I mean, you, you, look, you look at like turnout for stuff like uh, alternative spirituality conventions yeah. they have in, in that area. Yeah. They have gun shows in that area. You know, they, yeah. it's, uh, sounds like something where you get a whole bunch of people together and really do some good, good work. Yeah, and it's forming a coalition, essentially, of all these people. You want to get people having a common interest in common defense and common economic support. And, uh, oh, I should mention one of the other things is, uh, uh, and you might want to mention this, Kevin, uh, the essentially community medical uh, support. Like in Ithaca, they have the Ithaca Hour as a money system, but the same guy and some of the other fellows started, uh, oh, I don't remember the name of it. John, uh, Glover, Glover, yeah. yeah. Maybe I can just say that. Okay. Talk about for a moment. We're talking about health care, relying on the state to do things for us. How about a health care fund? We have 100 people. We put in 100 bucks a month, or 50 bucks. Say 100 bucks. What's that? Ten thousand dollars? Yeah. 100 times 100. How fast does that grow over a year? You have six months, for instance, in which there's a, a waiting period, and then you can start accessing the fund with these 100 people. That could grow like crazy uh, without a profit motive. It's uh, not it's all the proceeds go to, uh, to whoever's you know, participating, plus uh, maybe a CPA to administrate it. And it grows from there. You can have 1,000 people, 100 bucks a month, $100,000. You won't use up all that money for even chiropractic and homeopathy and the type of treatment that we would like to get so we'll all turn into nature. Yeah, and, I, and I've heard of another... See, it's, it's inexpensive, but it's everybody contributing to a fund that, okay, maybe as a group we decide, okay, let's just burst it all and, uh, and use it to buy, uh, build a center because we've got some excess money over the course of the year. We have a center, a small center, to be able to have the care that we want at an affordable price <coughs> Uh, that takes care of our tribe. Yeah, and and another model is, um, you know, after somebody has a an illness or whatever, um, people contribute in. Like, you know, you'll go to a gas station and there'll there'll be a picture of, you know, help Jamie uh, fund. You know, she has lupus and uh, can't afford her medical bills. So people at the gas station will donate five bucks or whatever. So. There are these models out there. We, as, as libertarians, freedom people, we should be promoting these mutual aid kind of ideas too, whether it's as an enterprise or as a fundraising thing. We should be the ones that people look at and say, boy, I really like those libertarians because they're really trying to help us stay healthy. They're really trying to help our community stay peaceful and happy and prosperous. And We've got to be the ones that build the future. That was the theme for today. Um, we have a whole bunch of other topics that also generally are about building the future. So, um, and any other ideas about the alternatives, the Alt Expo, um, the Alt City Hall idea? We can brainstorm more about that. Okay, we have these uh, speed talks. Oh, thanks. Thank you. <laughs>